Hi, this is Luke Womack, Executive Director of the GoFund. We're excited to be with you today. I'm joined by my colleagues, Matt Sonke, our Director of Operations, and Jay Stovall, our Director of Marketing and Communications. We're going to be speaking with you today as if you're here with us in the room. We're sitting around the coffee table in the family room, and we're talking about a topic, the dilemma of student debt, a topic that might be heavy for you and is one that we've thought about and talked about a ton. Uh, so join us for the conversation. So we'll dive right in. The first question, when is it right to take on student debt if I feel called to be a missionary? I think the first thing we need to do is back up and kind of frame this whole thing. Like, let's think about how we should think about money as a Christian. Mm -hmm. uh, there was an article written by the late Ralph Winter uh, called Reconsecration to a Wartime Lifestyle. And in the article, he said this, I believe that God cannot expect less from us in our Christian duty to save other nations than we in wartime require of ourselves to save our own nation. This is the wartime mindset. Like, think about this. If our own country is in war, we're going to go to great ends to protect our own country, defend its borders, right? It, you should do that. Mm -hmm. But we are not fighting a war just between geopolitical nations. Like we are joining Christ as he seeks to save all nations and redeem representatives of every tribe, tongue, and nation to himself. So we're joining him in that great effort. How much more should we uh, attempt to join him in that and exhaust all of our resources to that end mm. than we would if we were in an actual physical geopolitical war with other nations. Like that changes the way that we think about money, that we think about student debt, when we consider that we're in a greater war that's spiritual, not just one that's between nations. Yeah, that is good. And, and just even taking a step back and looking at culture, we're in a cultural war too. And what greater time than to leverage everything, student debt, education, for the sake of the gospel, like, like this is, this is an eternal mindset that you're talking about it. Like with money, this is an eternal mindset that we, even in this, even in the midst of this pandemic, that's probably still going to be going on and, and cultural unrest that we're dealing with. There is something to be said about the gospel being reached and God still being at work and our student debt can be leveraged with our education to make that happen. Mm -hmm. So I think we just need to think strategically. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good strategically, how do we use student debt if we have to, uh, to get to the mission field? So we need to think about how much money are you going to make as a missionary? You're probably not going to make much money. And so if you're taking out 120 K to get a Bible degree so that you can teach someone the Bible, uh, the chances of you paying that back as a missionary is going to be very difficult. So you need to think ahead. If I'm going to be a missionary, how much money am I going to make? Am I ever going to be able to pay this off? At the GoFund, the average student debt that we take on is around 50 grand. That's $500 a month for 10 years. That's a ton of money. It's going to be very difficult. And so it's best as a Christian in general to avoid debt at all costs. So in general, don't, don't take out the debt unless you absolutely have to, to get to a specific country that God has called you to. Hmm. And what if we continue to think long-term and what am I passionate about? So hear that pronoun, what am I passionate about? And then once I find my degree for my life, and then I'll figure out where God wants me to go, mm. what he wants me to do with my degree. Like, what if we flip that around and we, we first said, Lord, what do you have for my life? Where are you calling me to go? How can I be most obedient to you? And if he's telling you to go to a certain place, a certain people group, like mm. maybe that's going to have implications on the degree that you get. Totally. So now it's not just about what am I passionate about? Like there's a place for that. I believe God gifts people and he uses your passion sometimes to speak to you, mm -hmm. but like, God, where are you going to take me? And what degree can I get to serve to that end that I might be obedient to you? So if he's telling you to get a degree, then you better get that degree no matter the cost because you want to be obedient to him. But if, if we mm. flip the formula a bit, I think it helps us be more obedient to him and, and put taking out student debt into its proper place. Yeah. And I think you're framing it because I think we got to talk a little bit to the nuance of who, if you're listening and, and you're just entering college, like this is great wisdom right here. If you're in the middle of college and you're like, shoot, that uh, graphic design degree that's about to cost me a hundred G private university like that doesn't seem very wise. Well, if you have a heart for a certain specific unreached people group and a region, and you know that this 
switching maybe to a business degree or engineering degree would help you gain access or figuring out strategically, how can I leverage my design degree to get access? It's thinking strategically and long-term, like you're saying, because the fear that I have for a lot of young people is they go in with their own passions and desires, and then God changes those, and then they're stuck with the, a ton of student debt, and they think, what am I going to do, and why did I even get this degree? So I think strategically helps them figure that out. Mm -hmm. I think just to wrap it up, um, think about stewardship. Think about the way that you're using your money to make an impact on eternity. So leverage it. Look for ways to share the gospel, whether you're at home or whether you go overseas, and utilize the resource of money to make an impact. Uh, debt is going to almost all, at all times uh, cause you to take more time to get to that goal. So avoid it at all costs. Um, because we live in America, at times debt is a necessary evil. But in those moments, go at the debt, attack it, get rid of it so that you can do what God's called you to unshackled. What are practical ways that you would encourage people to avoid debt? Yeah. So a couple. Number one is just school choice. Mm. So often we go to the school that our parents went to or. Oh, the most, yeah. Uh oh, you're I just to, hurt. You're about feelings. to hurt some uh -oh. feelings right now. <laughs> or you validated someone's feelings like, <laughs> yeah. Mom and dad, I didn't want to go there. I did there. not want to go. Yeah. But, you know, oftentimes that happens. It's like, hey, we, you know, we bleed, you know, Trojan Red. So we go to USC or whatever the school is. And, no, that's okay. I think it's okay to have pride in, in the alma mater. Mm -hmm. But, man, sometimes you should just pick a school that's cheaper as we're mm -hmm. thinking with this wartime mindset and wartime mentality, right? Um, here's an idea. And this one might uh, be a little bit polarizing, too. What about starting with community college? We've all heard it. Like, let's look at some of the hard numbers. You ready? The average tuition price for a four-year private institution in the U.S. is about $35,800 per year. That was 2018, 2019. By contrast, the cost is only, wait for it, $3,600 at a public two-year institution. So if you add up the numbers, you just you know do the first two years in a community college, for instance, uh, you'll be saving roughly $34,000. I'm sorry, $64,000. Roughly. Roughly $64,340. So it's actually exact. So here's a question. What might you do with $64,340 less in student debt? The mm -hmm. answer is whatever God directs you to do with your life. That's the answer. <laughs> yeah, totally. You do it sooner. Yeah. And I think just, I think that's probably a cultural uh, myth too, is that people have this association with community college is that it's like a lesser than mm -hmm. universe. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm going to community college. They didn't make it. And, and they're actually going to be the ones thinking about long-term strategy mm -hmm. that are going to be unshackled sooner. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, there's almost this cultural shame to community college. Anyways, yep. I just, I've heard that a lot. Yeah, no, I think it's a good note. Um, another one is just to work while in college. Um, a lot of times uh, parents might say, and I think rightly so, because they, they care about a lot of the right things. Like, hey, I'm helping you go to college. You need to focus on college. But there's this idea that if I work while I'm in college, like I'm going to lose sight of my studies. There, there's a principle called Parkinson's principle, and it basically says that the task shrinks or expands to fit the amount of time you have. Mm -hmm. uh, let me translate. Procrastination works. <laughs> so if you're a procrastinator, like, I mean, you get superhuman potential. I can finish that thing in like five minutes. Mm -hmm. I can write an essay in an hour because I get this superhuman strength. I think the same thing applies here with working while you're in college. Like studies actually show uh, that working while in college between one and 20 hours. Mm -hmm. So greater than one hour, less than 20 hours, so not too much, but just a little bit, will actually improve your GPA. 100%. And I think that the point there is like Parkinson's principle comes into place. You have less time to do your work. So in some ways, you actually become better at it. And here's what you can do. With the extra money that you make from that job, you cash flow a part of your tuition. Yep, that's so good. Man, I wish I would have thought about this stuff in college. <laughs> Things that Luke is sharing right now is is gold. I, I would say the thing that I see happen so often is people just don't have the discipline to delay gratification. Um, I, I think about it kind of in this analogy. There's a little theme park in our city, and it's really bad, um, <laughs> really bad. But I could take my family there for like 50 bucks. So for, I could, For everybody. Yeah, for everyone. So I could go there every year for 50 bucks and it would be okay. Or I could save that $50 and after a while I would have enough to go to Disney World and we would have the time of our lives, like the best vacation. 
Um, but I just have, we just have such a hard time delaying gratification. So you have to think about that when it comes to money. Uh, you need to avoid, avoid heading in the direction that's going to cost so much. And generally those things have to do with debt. Mm. And some of us didn't avoid student debt and had <laughs> close to 223,000 in student debt. And I would just encourage you if you're sitting in the spot because it's like, yeah, it would have been great to hear all of this. But some of you maybe don't have people in your life that can point you in with this kind of wisdom. But um, if you're in a place of student debt, first thing you got to do is get a budget mm -hmm. and and you just, you have to be hungry to, to get out of debt. You don't want to be enslaved to it. And if you and if you're lazy and you just assume that it will magically disappear, because I think sometimes we don't realize how much debt we take on. And so when we first see those payments, we think, how am I going to do this? I was there. I remember thinking, surely this will just disappear after 10 years. I heard that somewhere, but it doesn't. And so, man, we live in a day and age where anyone can have a side hustle. Anyone can have a side hustle mm -hmm. um, and you util utilize those to your advantage to, like Matt said, be very disciplined to delay gratification and work hard. And if you're faithful, I believe God will entrust you with much. And just shout out to these two guys. They both had significant student debt yeah. and they worked their tails off and they live like a rice and beans lifestyle. And Matt paid all of his off. Jay's like months away. Um, yeah. So it, it's pretty cool to see that. Um, their their positive mindset and really just trusting in the Lord's provision got them to a spot where they're debt free and and almost debt free. And man, does it feel good to be free? Yeah. Oh yeah. Hmm. So last question is, what should I do if I'm already in debt but I want to get to the mission field? So hmm. you're already in debt. God has made it clear. Go to the mission field. What do I do now? Um, I would say three things: um, pray, work, and then resource. So number one, pray. Like. We serve the God who created the universe. I know that your debt probably seems as big as the universe, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure God can handle it. So start with prayer. Ask God to take this burden from you. Uh, that doesn't mean you can sit on your hands, uh, but it does mean that you get a direct line to the God of the universe. You should probably start by asking for his help and for his provision and watch him work in your life. Uh, and that's that's another piece of it, kind of the other side of it, is you you need to work yourself. Uh, God's very answer to your prayer might just be you working. Mm -hmm. It might not be a golden check. Uh, it, it's you working. Uh, you can pay off your debt, just like Matt did, just like Jay's about to do, um, if you live off a rice and beans lifestyle. Like you're not going to restaurants, you're not going to the, the $1,000 theme park or the $50 theme park. Uh, you're, you're staying in and you're doing nothing. You you use your mom's Netflix, uh, cancel your own, whatever you need to do. But every single dollar you have goes goes toward your student debt um, and, and you'll, you'll be able to pay it off. Uh, the last thing I would say is just a resource. Like look at resources around you after you pray, after you work um, to, to help you pay it off sooner. I mean, maybe there's a program, uh, there's a group called MedSend that will um, give you, I think, a four-year grant if you go overseas in uh, like a, a medical, um, using a medical platform. So I'm meeting humanitarian need. Obviously, the GoFund, we have student debt for long-term missionaries to the unreached going through their local church. Uh, maybe your family will help someone at your church. You can cast a big vision for them about what God's telling you to do with your life. And perhaps God moves their heart uh, to mm -hmm. pay off some or maybe even all of your student debt. Mm -hmm. I think you had a friend who got like all his student debt paid off in, in, in like a ministry setting, right? Yeah, it was ridiculous. Yeah. So, it was good for him, though. Praise yeah. God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what happened there? Do you remember? Um. I mean, yeah, like he cast the net wide and God answered. I mean, it's just simple as that. Like sometimes we're afraid. I love what you just said. You said um, essentially what you're alluding to is being vision driven. Mm -hmm. And I think to, to go back to the question, you want to get on the field. And so if you are not being led by that vision, if that is not your why, if that is not something that you are continuously pointing to, if it's not up on your wall, in your house, on your phone, like if that is not, you're going to lose sight. Mm -hmm. You're going to lose sight and you're going to run out of steam. And so you have to stay vision driven and you have to be led by your why. It can't be, it can't be for any other reason other than that. And mm -hmm. so that's what, that's what happened with a friend of mine. And like God clearly, you know, saw that and, and honored that. And he was able to be out, out of debt. So mm -hmm. the best things in life almost always take really, really hard work. Mm -hmm. And so stay focused. Like he's saying, the three of us know so many 
young people who said, I'm going to the mission field. Mm -hmm. And then they saw their student loan balance at the end of it. And that dream went away really quickly. They still could have gotten there. They just had to do a lot of hard work. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, my encouragement to you is if you have debt, but God has called you overseas, he will provide. He has all the resources. He created this world. Um, so trust him with that and do some hard work because it's worth it. At the end of this life, at the um, when you're standing before the king and you think about how much you had to pay to get out of that debt so that you could do what he's called you to do, there's going to be so much joy in that moment. And I don't want you to miss that. I don't want to miss that. That's why Jay and I have attacked our debt because we wanted to be free to do what God asked us to do. So I encourage you to do the same.